Good morning. Blessings to you on another day God has given us for which we are thankful. And we are invited to express our thankfulness. It is a mirror of who we are as Christ is in our lives. Blessings to you this day. <clears throat> Reminder of uh, the services that we uh, live stream uh, to you. Sunday mornings at 10, this service, and Wednesday evenings at 7. We have a, a 15 minute long uh, communion uh, service uh, at that time. And the uh, sources for all of these go to our uh, Facebook page or our website to uh, find out how to get to. Uh, all of these uh, these pieces. We're, uh, we welcome today Miles Sutton, who uh, will add to our music today. Miles, good to have you here. Uh, Miles will um, uh, play the oboe and piano on uh, some of our music here today. Good to have you. And to uh, add uh, Miles to the rest of our participants uh, here today. Thank you to uh, all of you. I want to invite you to, uh, right now, get a piece of paper and a pencil or pen. Um, <laughs> anything like this. I get teased around here for having a red pen uh, lots of times since I, I like to uh, put things out where I make sure I don't miss them, things that are important. So uh, if you could get a piece of paper and pencil, it's... Uh, during the sermon, I'm going to ask you to use that, so if you just have it ready at that time, you don't have to go get it then. Reminder, uh, also every Thursday, we uh, upload another um, Prince of Peace uh, pop-up music for the soul. Uh, wonderful, uh, special music, uh, usually classical or spiritual uh, pieces that uh, uplift us. Uh, so uh, watch for that. Uh, again, you can get to that on, on our website. And uh, you can watch it anytime thereafter. Um, uh, there. So there's a whole bunch of them up there if you go, go and look. For our giving, to a reminder, again, go to our website and find uh, all the, the links to uh, how you can most easily uh, give. Very simple uh, process there. For uh, our worship today, let's begin with prayer. Lord, I thank you for your word. Today we hear some more parables that Jesus shares with us that change our lives, that teach us what the kingdom of heaven is all about. So Lord, um, focus our hearts and minds this day to what you bring us, that we might all know you more closely. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing... Uh, this uh, mighty hymn, I just love this piece, and uh, we've had it as a theme for the last uh, few weeks here, Lift Every Voice and Sing. Who has brought us down? 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and the resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. a note I uh, should have mentioned in the uh, welcome here. If uh, we have your uh, email, then uh, you receive from us uh, uh, each week. Uh, Deborah sends out uh, this whole bulletin so you can uh, follow along more easily with the service. You'll get uh, the um, announcement pages included there and all the things that are going on uh, here. So if, um, if you uh, want those things, make sure you uh, let us know your email address. Our first lesson today from 1 Kings chapter 5. This is a, a very special uh, piece on Solomon when God grants Solomon wisdom. And so that's the most familiar uh, description in our minds of who King Solomon was in the Old Testament, the one who God gave wisdom to and because he asked for it. Uh, he's a young boy here. And the, uh, uh, one of the smiles that came to my face uh, reading it again, whereas uh, God says, I'm going to give you wisdom and understanding as you have asked. The way Solomon asks, uh, when God asks him what he uh, can give him, and Solomon asks for these things, he already has a bunch of wisdom going for him. Wonderful story. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask, what should I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go in or to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall rise after you. God's word about Solomon. Let's sing. for today, uh, more parables from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, 
so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good, bas good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. This is God's word.
Thank you so much, Miles, and uh, your accompaniment, David. Wow. So um, a man named uh, Bernard Tristain once uh, won a uh, contest uh, uh, in the newspaper business. He provided the best answer to the question. Here's the, the big question. If a fire broke out in the Louvre, and you could save only one painting, which one would it be? His reply, the one nearest the exit. <laughs> he knew paintings, but he also knew an even bigger treasure <laughs> for him, his own life. Yeah. We have some parables we're going to look at today. And a chunk of what these parables are about is about treasures. What is most important to you? What do you want to make sure is close by when there's an emergency you can grab it and save it and get out that exit? These uh, are uh, parables all in chapter 13. There, there's a bunch of parables that Jesus tells in, in this chapter. The last couple of weeks have been two of the long parables from, from this chapter. Two weeks ago, it was about the four soils. Last week, it was about the, the, the good seed uh, that uh, Sam gave us such uh, wonderful insights uh, from. Uh, today, we're going to look at four more of the parables, uh, and these are all much shorter. These are all very short ones. And all of the parables uh, here in, in this uh, part of Matthew all begin the same, the, the one about the seeds in the last couple, but all of these today also. The kingdom of heaven is like... The kingdom of heaven is like a wonderful thing for us to learn because this is, this is that in which we live. Later in the service today, we're going to pray the, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And when we pray that, which is prayed every day of the week, billions of times around the world, in case you hadn't stopped to think about it, what are we expecting when we pray that? What is God's kingdom really like? We often think about it, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it's obviously a noun, some place where we might be, perhaps. Um, we have ideas of what we think heaven should be like when we get there. Um, Revelation gives us some uh, additional images of uh, streets of, of gold, uh, Beauty uh, is there. Uh, we may picture heaven as uh, up in the clouds, uh, uh, light and soft. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be good. But these parables remind us that the kingdom of heaven isn't just a noun. There's more to it because all of these, none of them stop. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. No, it doesn't stop there. It goes on. It's a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field and then it grew that even the birds, it's an event, it's what happens, it's an activity. So the kingdom of heaven is also a verb, it's, it's a happening here. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, not just period, not period. It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed into three measures of flour until it was all leaven. It's a story, it's a happening. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hidden, then in his joy goes and sells all he has and buys the field. People are involved in the kingdom of heaven. They respond, they wonder, they think, they do something, and something happens because it's the kingdom of God. So that's helpful for me to keep in mind when we learn a little bit about the four we're going to uh, look at uh, here today. The first uh, two short parables we're going to look at are uh, about uh, the mustard seed and the yeast. Both of those have to do with something that is small or invisible or you're not really aware it's even there and it becomes something you can't miss, something big, majestic. The mustard seed becomes this bush and then a tree where the birds can build their nests. It becomes uh, amazing. And there's lots of that that happens. The kingdom of God all over the Bible Jesus, when he feeds the multitudes, he takes 
just small amounts of food and he feeds thousands of people. That's what God can do because that's how the kingdom of heaven happens that way. The whole story of the gospel of a little baby coming to a know-nothing young girl in a know-nothing little village and out of that the world is changed by God's presence. These things change the world. Back in the last century at uh, John Hopkins University, um, some uh, sociologists picked out uh, a group of children in a certain neighborhood in Baltimore. <clears throat> uh, they chose the children who were the most disadvantaged there. They picked out 200 children and they were uh, guessing, gonna do an experiment here to see if they were right, that these children who didn't have the advantages that most of us have today and most of the other children in the Baltimore area had then as well, uh, they didn't have the right uh, parentage, the right skin color, the right beginnings to education, the right neighborhoods to grow up in. And because of those disadvantages, these 200 children, all of them, was the experiment, would grow up to be not much of anything. They'd be in trouble. And one of the statements made was, we guess all 200 of these are going to end up in jail at some point. 25 years later, the uh, experimenters came back and got back in touch with these 200 people. Two of the 200 had ever been in jail. Not what they expected. So they interviewed all of these 200 now young men and women. And the thing that kept coming up in interview after interview was the name of an elementary school teacher, Aunt Hannah. Aunt Hannah. Aunt Hannah. So they were correct in their predictions. They would be the dregs of society was their expectation. But there was an intervention. Aunt Hannah, a teacher, came in and loved them. Changed the whole thing. A little bit like yeast something nobody even realized was happening, was even present. And 25 years later, you see this huge change. The kingdom of heaven is a bunch of children who have little chance of ever being anything good. And in walks Aunt Hannah and loves them. The kingdom of heaven. God at work. A couple then uh, parables that aren't quite the same, but not totally different. These are about treasure. Things that are so important in a person's life, they are willing to uh, set aside everything else to get a hold of it. It's a priority above all priorities. Lots of people have things that they can't wait to get a hold of or to become real in their lives. Uh, this uh, one woman was at a, uh, a music concert with an incredible uh, professional a pianist. And afterward, she said, I would give all the time in my life, everything, if I could play like that. And the pianist said, probably under his breath, I bet you wouldn't give five minutes a day. She had no idea what was involved in becoming like that. In another setting, happened to be another musician. Sorry, I'm not picking on you today. <laughs> but I bet you could appreciate this. Another setting, 
Another woman came to a, uh, a flautist in this case and said, I'd give my whole life to be able to play like that. And this gentleman said back to her, that's exactly what I gave. To become something that is so important, it, it's very costly. And Jesus knows that as he is talking to the people and tells them those two parables of treasure. Something that they would give anything because they value it so much. Anything to get a hold of it. Yeah. One more story, and then you're going to become the story. This one I want to read pretty much the way it's, uh, it's written. Church council at this congregation, not this congregation, at this particular congregation, gathered for their monthly meeting. Theirs was a small church struggling to grow. The church had received a substantial grant from an urban church that had closed and had decided to help other churches in the area by distributing its endowment fund. A worshiping congregation, this was, of less than 30 people. This church had decided to spend the gift in a way they hoped would help them grow. They had taken a bold step. Some of them thought it was a foolish step of calling a full-time pastor. They didn't have a full-time, it was a, a small church. Knowing full well that unless attendance grew and contributions increased dramatically, they would run out of money in less than three years. Membership had increased. Pledges were now twice the amount they were before this bold step of faith. But the picture was still bleak. The council members now listened carefully as the treasurer reported the year-end deficit, $11,000. This is a few years ago, so the numbers are a bit different. $11,000. They had known they were behind, but the figure to them was staggering. A full 20% of the total budget. There was an uncomfortable silence, disturbed only by the sound of people shifting in their chairs. And then one of the men started to chuckle. The woman next to him flashed a look of surprise and, and horror, and then something in her started to giggle too. One by one, the people around the table were captured by the spirit of laughter. Some of them were nervous to begin with against their wills, but soon the whole room was filled with the sound. Why were they laughing? How could they possibly laugh when they were faced with such a serious situation? Then again, how could they not laugh? What a ridiculous notion to think that they could really raise that kind of money that it would take to balance the budget. What an impossible situation. Yet there was other thoughts there. They had been led there by a vision, hadn't they? Wasn't that from God? That they were called to do more than they had done before? That the potential for ministry was great there, their setting? That the possibility of growth was real? That God had put them on the road they were on? They laughed because they couldn't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of it all. They laughed because they felt overwhelmed and inadequate in the face of it all. They laughed because somehow deep within them, they knew they weren't ready to give up and that God was not ready to give up on them. They could have cried. Maybe they should have cried. But instead they laughed. The last to join the laughter was the pastor sitting on the far side of the table wondering if he was going to be able to cash his next paycheck. Have you understood all this? He wanted to shout. But finally the spirit tickled even him and he spewed his coffee out of his mouth as the laughter overtook him. Yeast comes along. A treasure is discovered and the kingdom of heaven is let loose and things change. The kingdom of heaven is alive. I want to do a, a challenge with you. Many of you are members here at Prince of Peace. Others are participants. Others are you are just tuning in. You're all invited to, uh, to hear this challenge. And it is about our financial giving. Um, We've uh, talked a bunch about all the other ways that we give. and uh, They are super important. This doesn't diminish that at all. But for this moment, we're going to set aside <clears throat> the idea of the financial giving. 
as uh, that's one of the things that uh, this congregation uh, is, is looking at. Uh, at our most uh, recent council meeting, I brought this challenge to the council members and challenged them to write down on a piece of paper two things. First one would be what they're going to do with their pledge for the rest of this church year and that they're challenged to increase it if that was at all possible for them, it isn't for everybody. So you know, this isn't a guilt trip or anything for any, any of you. But many of us are capable of adjusting our giving. And, and some said, uh, man, I just haven't gotten around to that for a while. It's, it's so easy. It just happens every week or every month all by itself the way I have it set up. And, but yeah, it's time and I can do this. And several of them had already done it. The, this, this outfit gets ahead of me frequently here, and I try to catch up. But the challenge for everybody uh, who was there to give, and a couple, well, I didn't ask about, but uh, one volunteer, yeah, I just increased by 10%. Uh, right now, our, um, our, the literature that we've noted says we're aiming for a 5% uh, increase each year uh, across the board, and that that will... Uh, help us meet our uh, budget, and then there are additional costs beyond that too, but that's a place where, where we will start. So now I invite you to take the paper that you got, if you wish to participate in this, if uh, you don't belong here and you want nothing to do with us, well, just listen in and have a smile. But I challenge all of you who are watching to consider this uh, one way or another. So write those two things, and then I'll give you 30 seconds. First, write down your intent for giving for the rest of the year. You're not going to send it anywhere. Nobody's going to know. If you want to change it next week, you just change it or do something else with it. So that's the first thing you write down. The second thing you write down is where you're going to put this piece of paper. Uh, one woman at the council meeting uh, made us think of, oh, fold it in the right way, and it's now a bookmark I'm going to keep in my Bible. Or you can put it in the corner of your mirror where you'll see it every day. Or you can fold it up and put it in your purse or in your billfold. Or take a picture of it with your smartphone and then text that, that uh, picture to your own message input. Or email it to yourself. So tomorrow when you look at your email, you'll be reminded of it. It's good for us to write things down. It's good for us to be reminded of them. So uh, now, uh, paper and pencil, 30 seconds, start right now. All right, time's up. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, next thing you do after we're done here today, uh, go put this where uh, you have decided. Uh, you're going to uh, keep it or make 14 copies of it and put it in different places if you wish. An often uh, thought of question at this point is, uh, maybe if you haven't given before or uh, want to change something of uh, a process that's easy and handy, again, go to our website and you'll see there, uh, you may wish to use the push pay method, which some dozens of people have changed to just in the last few months during this coronavirus thing. I've used it for, for years. Uh, it's uh, just so simple uh, that uh, you can do it once, uh, but... Uh, uh, the hope is you just put it in there that it happens automatically every week, every two weeks, every month, whatever you so wish. In addition to that, you can in 36 seconds go in and make an additional offering for a special thing that comes along, uh, etc. So blessings to you as you have taken part in this challenge. It is a challenge to you to look at these parables of the kingdom of heaven and remember God's kingdom is among us and it's making things happen and sometimes it starts really small and you can't keep up with it and it always is a treasure beyond what we can imagine and I leave you with the parable the kingdom of heaven 
is like a bunch of children who have little chance of being anything good. And in walks Aunt Hannah and loves them. Amen. Let's uh, sing together Jesus' priceless treasure. Jesus is the priceless treasure. Let us pray and offer our prayers for the church and our world today. Confident in your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, you reign in victory, and your reign is revealed to us in common things. 
like a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help us as your church to witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in our daily lives. We pray that when your word is opened, that it will give light and understanding to all of us. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers, even us as common people. Help us to treasure the earth and the communities and the places where you have placed each one of us. We pray that you touch our hearts and nudge us to look for the treasure in each other and in the world out there. Lord, we know that we live in a world that is full of heart, that is full of turmoil. But may our eyes be open to your work in the world. And let us celebrate each other as a people, as a society, as a community, even here in our nation, Lord. We pray that your hand be upon us to find treasure in each other rather than tear down each other. Lord, as the birds of the air nest in the branches of trees, we pray that you gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shed of your merciful reign. Direct our leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. We pray that your Holy Spirit will, will help us in our weaknesses. And may your Spirit intercede for us according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying. Be a refuge to those who are weary. And bring justice to those who are oppressed. May you heal the sick among us. We pray that you will show your steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this your congregation, our congregation, to ask boldly for what we need here today, but more importantly, in the not so distant future. Refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and in this time. Lord, we know that in you our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by inspiring our witness, the witness of your people in all times and in all places. Embolden our witness now and one day gather us with all your saints in light. For those who hunger or thirst, for those who doubt or are terrified, and for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for caregivers, that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ, especially we pray for Karen Wesson, Phyllis Bowman, Barbara Atkinson, June Brady, William White, Sandra Lamb, Stephanie King, Brady Schweitzer, Ryson Hauser, Shaman Toma, Shelley Giles, Benjamin Minaski, Jack Jacobson, Dennis Schott, Janet Schneider, Laurie Ramsey, Dorothy Wilson, Bob Leonard, Marian Prey, Rick Bottoms, Bonalene Henderson, 
Cloud Wesson, Betsy Pullman, Marilyn Eldenkamp, Kim McComb. Lord, we also bring before you these persons whose names we share out loud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. In the sun hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now may God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.